Welcome to this Orchard Content Management System Jumpstart. The purpose of this presentation is to provide broad exposure to the Orchard CMS through a demonstration of both core capabilities and a variety of installed extension modules. Though not strictly necessary, in this demo I assume you have already viewed the wonderful free training video called Introduction to Orchard provided by Pluralsight. Nevertheless, small portions of that screencast will be quickly repeated in part one of this series to provide context. Thereafter, the balance of part one demonstrates additional commonly chosen customization steps. Then parts two through four will continue the demonstration into a breadth of intermediate level customizations. We will now proceed with a fresh Orchard install. The prior mentioned Pluralsight videos suggested there are three ways to install Orchard. We'll be quickly reproducing the web matrix path and add a few new observations along the way. For example, the site name that you specify when installing Orchard CMS is not actually the name of the site. It's just the name of the folder in which the files will be installed. We'll decide the name of the site later. We'll accept the EULA and wait for the install to finish. With that complete, we are now dropped into the web matrix IDE. Again, this is an environment that is for those who are either lightweight coders or those who don't wish to do any coding at all. If we actually do want to step into hard coding and debugging with Orchard, we'd want to use Visual Studio. However, I don't recommend launching Visual Studio from WebMatrix. If you do, all the files will be copied over and you will be able to see them, but you won't be able to build anything as it won't have a proper solution. To have that kind of environment, I recommend you download the source code directly, then point Visual Studio at the solution that came with Orchard, and then you'll have a properly set up development and debug environment. I also want to point out that when it is time to upload your site to your hosting provider, I recommend that rather than using FTP, that Microsoft's web deploy technology is used. You see that the choices are available here. You can fill in these items by hand or I recommend just have your hosting provider export the settings for you then import them locally. We'll give that a try right now by going to the demo folder selecting these publication settings that the hosting provider had given and we can see they've been filled in now. You'll see that there are these subdirectories for your site and your destination. I recommend that you remove those so that your site will be uploaded to the root of your hosting provider and that IIS will activate the application in that root location. Now we'll go ahead and launch our site. We'll use Google Chrome and we'll call our site Firestorm Our choice for database is either a full-on version of SQL Server or an embedded file-based version of SQL Server known as SQL Server Compact. For most smaller sites, this is probably the correct choice to make. It makes it simple to copy the site from one location to another and the copy does represent a full install at that point. Orchard can start off with minimal functionality, mid-level functionality, or all functionality configured out of the box. I prefer to have the maximum functionality out of the box, so I'll just leave it at default. Now that we've selected to finish our setup, Orchard will do a one-time configuration, which we will not see again. Given that we have used the compact edition of the database, I should point out that if you wish to separately browse the contents of that database, it cannot be opened in SQL Server 2008 Management Studio. It can be opened by LinkPad, SQL Server Compact Toolbox, or Visual Studio 2010 with Service Pack 1 installed, or Tools for SQL Server CE 4.0 installed. Unless a patch is forthcoming for Management Studio, I do not expect to be able to access the compact edition of the database until SQL Server 2012. Okay. Now that we're looking at the site, I will not go over basic editing capabilities as that was already covered in the Pluralsight introduction to Orchard. Instead, we'll go into some common customizations that are often the first steps taken for a new Orchard site. For example, we'll go ahead and create a theme, or should I say we'll take one from the gallery. I'm going to look for the Minty theme and see if I can install that. So I choose to install it it downloads from NuGet and then we get a message saying that we have achieved success if I looked at my installed themes 
I'll see that there is the current theme and now there's a newly available minty theme. We could preview it or if we trust it we'll just go ahead and set it as our current theme which I will do. With it set we can now see that our site has been skinned with a new theme. For our next customization step we're going to add a subtitle. We already have the main title but a subtitle will require that we add a widget. So we'll go to widgets and to understand where to add it we need to look more closely at the right hand side of our screen here in the middle where we get an idea of what layout options our Minty theme has available to us. We see the location of where the header is, where the home slideshow is, uh, where the content is, etc. We want to put our subheading or subtitle in this header and we can see that the names in the middle of the screen here correspond with the items we just saw on the theme preview. So we're going to go ahead and choose the word header here and say we're going to add an HTML widget. We'll say that this site is a great place to be. I won't bother to give it a title and I will select save. If I look back at the site now we do in fact have a subtitle but it did not appear where we intended it to be. It was supposed to be underneath our main title. So let's go fix that. We go back to the dashboard, go back to widgets, we go look at the HTML widget and we see that its position is 1. I believe that the main title for the site is actually at position 10. Or it certainly is some position higher than number 1. So to ensure that this follows after it, I'll change this to position 20. I hit save, return back to my site, and now we see our catchphrase or subtitle is where we expect it to be. Now for further customization exercises, we'll download two different modules, two different extensions that we can take a look at to get an idea of how to use extensions. I'll start with Bing Maps and I will install this one. Then I will install the image gallery. This was successful. I'll say OK. And now I will search for the image gallery. And install that as well. With that now installed, let's go put our widgets into place. We'll start by adding the Bing Maps. Again, consulting our theme overview, we can see there's a sidebar area where we can put widgets. Of course, we could put widgets into any of these areas, but I will, in fact, choose this sidebar. So I'll look for the word sidebar, which I see here, and I'll say Add. The list of items which we could add has now expanded. Included in this list now is the Bing Map widget. I will select it and I'll start to fill in this data and I'll resume the video when I'm done. Okay, I've punched in some appropriate values. I've chosen the name of a popular restaurant in downtown Phoenix and given some coordinates that roughly point to downtown Phoenix area. The width and the height are in pixels associated with our website and a zoom level. I'll hit save and if we view our site right away we'll see that that map is now made available it's fully functional as you would expect. I can zoom in and out and pan about. Now it's time to go add our image gallery. So I'll go to the dashboard and I'll select image gallery and start to add some images. I'll call the gallery name impressive. I'll say save and of course now we need to have some images in that gallery. So we'll say add images and we'll choose. We'll select this lighthouse and say open and upload. I'd like to add another one for effect. Choose file. We'll take this desert scape and we'll upload. I should point out the ability to add this material wasn't available until I installed the image gallery widget. Once I had it became part of the dashboard command set. Now I'll move on to widgets 
because just simply having selected the photo says nothing about where it should be located. I'd like it to be in the sidebar, so I'll say add, choosing the image gallery widget, which also was added based on the module being installed, and I'll give it our title of fantastic. It says, which image gallery would I like to display? Well, we've only made one. We called it our impressive gallery. It has automatically selected it. I'll choose to use the Lightbox JavaScript mode of presentation. And before I save, I'll take care of one more matter. I would like this image gallery to appear after Bing Maps. Right now, if I save it at position 1, it will appear ahead of Bing Maps. So I'll just go ahead and increase its position to perhaps 5 which will be more than enough to make certain that it occurs after. I'll now check on our site and sure enough I see it occurs after Bing Maps and the light box behavior is behaving as we would expect. Now before we conclude this segment I switched to Web Matrix to have a discussion about the Orchard command prompt. In addition to the administrative dashboard that we've been using there is also the ability to use a command prompt to do such things as enable or disable modules. This is particularly useful if a module has been installed and is now considered to be suspect for causing the system to crash. If it has crashed, it might be that we are unable to access the dashboard and to disable the module, in which case we need the command line to take care of this issue. If it is in fact, say, this Bing Maps that we think is suspect and is causing our problem, we would go to WebMatrix, we would go to the folder where the module is stored, we'd look for the module.txt file, we'd open that, and inside we can see what its literal feature name is, Bing period maps. That's important because we're going to now take that to the Orchard command line. I'll get to the command line by selecting Site allowing Windows Explorer to be opened up on the site location. I'm actually going to back up one folder level so I can control shift right click and say I want to open a command window here. This is our true site route and to access the Orchard command line we need to find the executable inside of the bin folder. We do however need the current working directory to be the site root which is why I'm not changing into the bin folder to launch this. We're going to see a few little uh, messages about how it had a failure or two. Um, I've never seen it behave any other way, but neither have I seen it cause any problems. From here we can say help commands. The number of commands that are available to us depends on how many modules we've installed, because every new module you install adds potentially new commands. If we want to disable our suspect Bing Maps module, we say feature disable bing.maps. That was the literal feature name that we just saw in the module.txt file, and it is now disabled for us. Of course, in truth, that wasn't causing any problems, so before we leave, we have to have our all too cool Bing Maps turned back on, so we'll go ahead and enable that again before we finish. Good. We'll quit, we'll exit, and we're back to Web Matrix. This concludes part one of this presentation in which we have covered three major topics for Orchard. The benefits, terms and concepts, and finally common usages, modular feature extensions, and the Orchard command line. In our next section we will create a blog and learn how to apply more advanced customizations. So please proceed to part two of this demonstration which continues with the Firestorm sample site as our venue for more Orchard customization scenarios.